Hi folks, back again. So today we are going to focus on uh, the upper limb, um, more specifically scapular stability now, or shoulder blade stability. This is so, so important for the prevention of any form of shoulder pain, neck pain especially, and it kind of follows on from the session that we did initially with the, with the neck and shoulder mobility. Everything leads from that. So for what I mean by that is that posture is so, so important in terms of static posture, so sitting posture, standing posture, to terms of dynamic posture in terms of how we how we play and how we play a tennis and how we play a squash and how we how we walk even. So the most important things really are to get the right muscles working to do their to do the job that they are designed to do. It's quite tricky. You know, it, with, with shoulder pain is, is really quite a, a prevalent in, in racket sports simply because you know we're over overhead all the time this is what we call the, the open packed and one of the most one of the most vulnerable positions for the shoulder the shoulder joint is a is a ball and socket joint um, and it in this position it's vulnerable so basically if you think of this ball and socket as the as the, the ball goes into the socket of the, of the of the shoulder the congruency is very small so we need stability to come from muscles tendons ligaments rather than the actual bony structure stability so if you think about lots of overhead activity especially with serving forehands as we come into backhand even you know we're coming around here so a lot of the emphasis is on tightening and shortening through here when we then train and get and to do some strength strength work for shoulders a lot of it is pushing a lot of it is all this work again that is actually very very tight and we forget about the most important muscles here, which are actually the stabilizers in, the, in our shoulder blade. So if you think of your shoulder blade muscles, or your shoulder blades essentially, like your pelvis, so everyone knows that this, thinks that this is, is the core, this is the core region, and you know, that, that's a cool thing, that's a cool phrase to be working on at the moment, is, is the core stability and core stabilizers and posture and all that sort of stuff, but, but to actually truly understand what it is, it, it's, it's quite a challenge. So hopefully that's what we what we can have a little bit of a chat about today as well. So the pelvis and the shoulder and the shoulder blades literally attach the limbs to the trunk to the to the to the, to the spine, the axial skeleton. And the only thing that really does that is the shoulder blade. And think how small and intricate those movements and muscles are. If we if we have a have a poor posture and it's come forward slightly, instead of the shoulder blade sitting flush to your thorax, what happens is it sort of comes forward a little bit we get this like rounded posture so you kind of hear and then naturally if we are in this position I actually cannot get any further if I'm there but if I simply change the position of my head neck and shoulders from there I then give myself the freedom to be able to move my shoulder so it's not just about ramming the shoulder into position it's about thinking about everything and how how set and how balanced neutral positions as in as in the pelvis we need to be in the head neck and shoulders as well so it's, it's quite a hard concept to get your head around because a lot of like I say a lot of the stuff that we do day to day is very much in this forward position so today we're going to focus on trying to get these muscles in, the, in our shoulder blades working but we must remember it's not a big squeeze the cues you give yourself are going to have to change so we're looking at, at lengthening engaging these muscles and you shouldn't shouldn't want to be able to hold your breath you should be able to should be able to gradually just engage them nicely to, to put the shoulder blades almost down into back pockets cues will be different for everybody so i'll try and give you a few different ones as well but there's there's different props and things that we can use to try and activate these shoulder blade muscles as well in line with that balloon posture we talked about previously so that, that helium balloon lengthening and lifting and, and if we lead from our neck then naturally our shoulders do go back a little bit as well and this is very much a, 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 a thing of practice makes perfect so what you will need today in our in our sort of prop box if you have one a theraband which is a basically a glorified piece of elastic band if you don't have a, have a theraband then we can modify with with a towel um, you can even use your tennis racket again you know or, or squash racket if it just feels good to hold it using that as a prop is absolutely fine but we don't want anything too heavy resistance um, you can use a very light weight like a kick of beans or something like that um, but what we're going to focus on initially is engaging those muscles to start with so it's just an engagement rather than any big kind of movement now again thinking about the types of muscle we're working we're working stabilizers 
So you think about stabilising muscle, they don't produce a lot of movement. So you wouldn't expect to get lots of movement from these activities. You're looking at getting the right muscles to work to give us the good, strong foundation so that we can get those bigger muscles to work around it. It will make sense as we go along. So we're going to start, we're going to start on, um, on all fours, actually. So to come down to here, move these bits and bobs out of the way. OK, so. Pretty much when we when we use have proprioception and, and, and try and get these these shoulder these these muscles working, use everything you've got. So obviously we're now bipedal, so we're going to use the hands on the floor to try and give that stimulus to, to work the shoulder blade. So to find position, and we're going to work also the core stabilizers in our tummy as well. So if you are in neutral spine here, you will also be in neutral and, the, and your shoulder blades will be set in your upper body as well. And this is how we're going to find it. So again, it's a bit of a yogi pilates type of move. Your hands want to be over your shoulders and your knees want to be under your hips, preferably shoulder width and hip width apart. Okay. So the same principles apply here as they do in that neutral position. So you're going to think about lengthening through your head, neck and shoulders. So lead from the head, you're not looking up and you're not dropping that head. This needs to be strong and stable. And straight away, that comes from these muscles up here. So as we're here now, to find neutral spine, we're going to do that slight pelvic tilt under, a bit of an arch, and then find that halfway house, and then pushing through the hands. So I want you to almost turn your elbow creases inwards, and what that does is set your shoulder blades down into the spine. To make sure you're in that position, a little bit of a trick here, is if you push your hands, your weight through your hands, you're gonna slowly then lift your knees about an inch or so off the floor. And what you should feel there is both your tongue and your shoulder blades working. And this is exercise one, okay? So that's, that's what we call scapular setting or making those, those, those exercise, those muscles working. So shoulder, the elbow creases turn in, lengthen through head, neck and shoulders, pushing through the hands, then gently lift about an inch or so off the floor, hold for five, four, three, two, one, and down. Good, go again, so find that neutral, press down, engage, lift off, hold for five, four, three, two, one, slowly down. Good, go again, so five times with this one, five, four, Three, two, one, and down. You should not feel any pain in your neck, no pain in your back. If you do, it means you're simply not in neutral. So find that pelvic tilt, go through the rigmarole again, neutral spine, lengthen up, head, neck and shoulders, elbows in. Five, four, three, two, one, and down. And then one more. Five, four, three, two, one, down, have a breather. And that in itself should be pretty hard work. So again, we're working here and setting through here, okay? Takes us in, the, 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 this is the basis of the foundation of movement. So now we can build on that. We're gonna take us, you may have done um, Superman exercises before where you lift alternate arms and alternate legs. For the purpose of today, we're focusing on upper limb. So we're just gonna do Superman arms and it's all about the position and the, and, the, and the mobility of that shoulder blade. So same position, feet and knees hip width apart, nice and tall, press through the arms again to turn the elbow creases inward, so almost pushing through the hands a little bit to set those shoulders down. You can do a little bit of an arch and rock and roll to get those moving too. Find that neutral in your butt and pelvis, and then you're transferring the weight just gently over to one side, then you're going to slowly reach the arm forward so the palm is open. The palm is open and your head is long and you want to then reach as far as you can there. Remember, it's a lengthening, not a lifting. So we're reaching forwards. The difference, if I lift and just go like this, I lose my neutral. See, I've arched there. So if I can gently slowly reach forward, coming from my shoulder blade, elbow shoulders down, back, and then we're going to come through open and then open up the palm the other way so your palm is now facing facing the wall and straight away if you open up that a little bit more you get that shoulder blade working so we're going to come through lengthen open 
reach. Your supporting arm will also be working. Good, so two. So make that shoulder blade muscle work. It should not be effortful. It's a lengthening. It's a reaching. Keep engaging that some as well. So we've got two more to do. Good. Open up that palm and open up from the shoulder blade. You won't be able to do it if you're down here, but if you're there, it will be completely different. One more time. Lengthen. Slowly does it back. Palm open. Down. And obviously, always repeat on the opposite side. So, I'll come round. One side will be easier than the other. We have a strong power arm, we have a dominant arm. We have a stronger stability arm. So find neutral, lengthen up, reach through, palm open, lengthen, back, open, turn palm up, again from the shoulder blade. It's not down here, you're up there, so working through. And if three is enough, that is absolutely fine. One, pushing forwards, two, Three, two more. This is a brilliant, brilliant core workout as well. So I feel my tongue working. Shoulder blade working. Face is getting a bit red. Heart rate's going up. Good. To there. And one more. Lengthen and really work from my shoulder blades coming up, open. And back on the floor there. Cool. So that's exercise two. So we've got the, the, the stability work where you're lifting knees up, then we've got the Superman arms. We're now going to come into standing. Okay, so we've been on all fours, so we didn't let gravity do its thing over, over this way. So now a bit more of a functional position in standing. Here, yeah. heart rate's going a little bit, that's quite high work. <laughs> so, so Things that we talked a bit before in the in the previous video about posture, balloon posture and all that sort of stuff, it's exactly the same in standing. So without sort of being like a soldier and standing up nice and tall, you want to think about length again. So engaging the, the tum and butt, shoulder blades just gently back down and lengthening up through here. Now, even just doing some gentle shoulder circles. Now shoulder roll backwards for the simple reason that if we shoulder roll forwards, you're reinforcing again the positional sense that we're always in, which is here. So just doing this to open up those shoulders, really, really nice thing to do. Okay, now as you lift up and then gently come down and slowly push down. So it's not a squeeze back by any means. My shoulders aren't here because what that will do is again push your head forwards. So you want to keep that length in the head, neck and shoulders and the shoulder blades will just then gently tuck down through with them without going to this arch. So finding that position. It did, it's very subtle movement, so it does take a bit of time. So a nice way to do that, again, if you're doing some shoulder rolls to here, get that nice balloon posture, so you're lengthening up through head, neck and shoulders. Try not to arch, so I've actually got a bit of engagement there too. And then using your, your elbows, I want you to just gently push your elbows just down to the floor, which should then get a little bit of work in your upper back. And shoulder blade. If you're there, good. So just push down, hold for a few seconds and relax and push down. So with the exercise we've already done, that should now, that should now be, those exercises should now be working. So we're rolling back, push down and then push gently elbows to the floor, hold for a few seconds and relax. Let me just come off the screen for that. Give me a second. Okay. So this is, the, this is the, the position we want to be in and we've got these muscles now, now working nicely. Now, every, for every person that I see who's, who have physio and stuff before, they are always given a band and they are working like video to get the, to get the work going here. When, you, when I ask where, to pay, where do you feel that muscle work, well, it's just around here, somewhere in here. But what we want to do is, if that exercise is brilliant, if we're working through here. So it's a slow controlled exercise. And you know what, again, it's all about the position of the, of 
position of what, what, what where we are. So if we're here and in that slump position, yes, you're going to be reinforcing these and it will cause that shoulder pain to increase. If we're set forward a little bit and set up nicely and you're moving from these muscles here, there's a huge, huge difference in the muscle work we get. And this is where the band work comes in. So if you have a bit of TheraBand, make sure the door is closed, it will fly open there. Um, if you have a bit of TheraBand, what we're going to do to start, we're not going to produce much movement, we're going to do what's called an isometric hold. So that will be just focusing and working on these muscles here. So again, posture, balloon posture, lengthen up, set those shoulders, hold into there and then elbow into the side. Remember, picture you've got 50 quid notes in the, in the, in the, in the elbow side. You're not going to let, let, let that go. So elbows in, nice and tall, and then gently just turn. You can put your hands onto your shoulder blade there and you'll feel that a bit of muscle work happen as we just gently pull out to the side there. So hold that. Now you need to hold this for about 30, 30 to 45 seconds and it will get a lot harder the more we do. It feels like an age, <laughs> but what will happen is that your shoulder will want to come forwards a bit, but you want to try and resist that by pushing that shoulder blade gently into your back pocket, keeping that nice good position and posture through there. So again, focus on lengthening. Elbow to the floor to really kick in those muscles. Holding for that amount of time. You go for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, good, and change. And then same thing on each side. So we're going to come to here, nice and tall. This is my pathetic left arm. So we'll go again, so elbow in, pushing down, open up, through here, hold. So I can get a real good feel of muscle activation there. If you're not feeling it in your shoulder blade, you stop, you reset, and you go again. You go to those basic principles. If you can't hold it for 30 seconds, that is absolutely fine. You know, 10 seconds to start with building up. So we're there. It, it comes off very, very quickly. Hold on for a few seconds. Four, three, two, one. Good, and relax there. Okay. The other way you can do that exercise is by using our trusty rusty towel. Take a mumbles and towel again. Shame it's cancelled, never mind. Okay, so holding that position, and we're just going to again set the position there and then gently pull apart. Again, not a squeeze, there's no resistance to this, and obviously, you're not going to pull the towel apart unless it's really old. Um, but you want to then just gently hold for a few seconds there and really get those shoulder blades working. And if you, if you can't find them working, then play with your position because it will probably feel quite alien. Good. Few seconds there. So this time we're doing both together rather than one at a time. Lovely. Holding that there. Good. And relax. Okay. So there's loads of modifications you can do from this. Now, so not only do we want to sort of work into into lateral rotation, this gives us obviously a lot of stuff we do is up here, but it it takes time and control to get through there. So. We won't, probably won't do that today. I want you to just get a foundation of this, of this bit of strength, and then we can build up through through ranges where we're working higher up into this into this position once we've got that bit of range. But again, if you take your your band or your towel and you tie it together to start with, okay. So this is just going to help with a little bit of of what we call cuff activation and postural stability through range. So you're going to. Put the band between your hands. You want to put it between the thumb and the index finger. And you want the little finger to be touching the edge of the band. That's important because that will give us this little bit of opening. So grip onto there. Nice and tall again, balloon posture, neutral spine. Engage the thumb and butt as well, just to give you that bit of stability. And then gently just tug out to the side a bit. Again, use from the shoulder blade. And then you're going to slowly lift up. And what that should do is naturally relax your upper shoulder, so you're trapped, and start to work your lower. If you feel that you then come into here, and that comes up, then, then you come back down and you set and you go again. So you don't want to be sort of lifting and hunching all the way from there, which a lot of us do. We want to be setting nice and tall, 
lifting up and just doing five of these nice and slowly to where you feel you come off will give you in great stead to get those shoulder blades and those and those, those scapular stabilizers really working so this is a lovely routine to do in conjunction with a bit of cardio with a bit of strength because essentially it is it is core work and that's where we need to build we always forget about neck and shoulders and anything above shoulder height then starts to become really quite um, quite sore if we haven't got that strength through the range here so again let's take this into a positive we've got plenty of time to build up through range and get those serves get those smashes get those, those, those big forehand and backhand volleys really really strong and stable and to prevent these these bits of neck and shoulder pain so they are our exercises for today and like i say if you want to pop the supplement the the uh, the towel or the or the band for your racket again you can just hold to the side grab hold and squeeze apart because that in itself if you just pull against your back there you should feel these muscles working so remember it's slow effortless control shoulder blade working shoulders do not want to be around ears if you get any pain from it and if you feel yourself holding your breath or squeezing or clenching then it's it's not the right type of muscle work remember it should be relaxed and controlled look forward to seeing you next time